I'm Colonel George N. Stokes, Sr. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> I was uh, a base ordnance officer working on at Hickam Field. All of a sudden, I got a, a move. They sent me up to Wheeler Field. At Wheeler Field, they began to organize a 363rd Air Service Group and a 21st Fighter Bomber Group. The 21st Group was... Uh, organized uh, not especially on Wheeler, but at a little uh, runway that, was, that we called Kapapa Gulch. It was down off the hill a little bit below, below Wheeler Field. So that, and that's where I first became acquainted with them. We had, uh, what was it, a P-61, Air, Bell Air Cobra had to cannon mm -hmm. through the propeller, propeller hub, and they were trans. Uh, they were re reassigning airplanes from that one to the F-86 and running their uh, uh, orientations. After, after the, everything was organized, and we, we got aboard the ship and we went on out to Iwo Jima. And uh, we, we were not allowed to depart the first day because there was an argument between the island commander and the ship's captain about something, I don't know what it was. So we stayed aboard the ship and there was a, an air raid uh, that night by the Bettys belonging to Japan. So I was, I was topside and watched all, all of the excitement going on. Uh, when we went ashore the next day, we did not know that uh, bonsai had happened until we got ashore. And when, as we went ashore, we bypassed that particular uh, mm. area and went on into the, the uh, middle field where we were going to camp. We we dug uh, foxholes and and set up a shelter house, two men to a, a mm -hmm. unit, and lived that way for a week or so. The only thing that I did have been a little exciting was. Uh, one day they were coming back from a uh, raid on Japan, and P-51 came in. He had two 500-pound uh, bombs under his wings that came off when he landed. He couldn't drop them over target, but they came off when he landed. <laughs> so and it was my it was my job to take the fuses out of them before before they were moved off of the runway, but. There was airplanes waiting to come in, and I had to get them out of there pretty quick. So, but we we made it. The uh, the, the nose fuses didn't have time to w unwind an arm, but the tail fuses were an inertial type, and uh, they could have gone any time. But uh, fortunately, I I was able to get them out of there. I I have some interesting things uh, associated with my my life because. My brother was at Iwo Jima. He, he was on an LST during, uh, during the assault wave. Then I have uh, an uncle-in-law who flew F-86s out of Iwo Jima. Now, the three of us did not know that the others were there until several years after the war was over. My brother was in the uh, Coast Guard, but he was on, on an LST. Then he was a water tender on, on that ship. And what he, his ship had was a bunch of great big tanks that they were intended to use to make a dock in order to unload ships. Well, the, the ocean currents there were, were not agreeable to that. So we, we lost all of those uh, big things. And one time, uh, some of my men and, and I went over on the beach and rescued one of them and set it up and used it for a shower tank. Hmm. We filled it with water, put it up, put it up on stilts, and filled it with water, and used that for showers. Well, the Japanese had gun emplacements all along the assault beach, and they were you know, targeted on that beach. They, the opposite side of the island was kind of rocky, and the, so the beach area. Was, they were smart enough to know that, so they set up their defenses in such a way that. It was kind of tough getting in there, but the Marines made it. 
in the Pacific for several months, and I was qualified to come back on uh, leave of absence. I applied for that and was accepted. And while I was back in the United States, uh, they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki. And that left me back in the United States. I didn't have to go back to Iwo. I was, uh, I was, was released from active duty and uh, stayed out for several years. I re joined the uh, reserves, and uh, <clears throat> when the Cold War started, they recalled me, and I, w I went to uh, uh, France with the uh, Air Depot Group and uh, at Châteauroux, France, and uh, stayed there for several months, I guess it was. I don't know exactly how long. But uh, then they moved me up to a little place called uh, uh, Frascati, which was a French air base at the time, training base. And uh, one area there, they, they had a res reserve staging point. Uh, it was a more, more of a warehouse kind of system. We had... Uh, beds and automobiles and all sorts of materials in case that we had to move. So uh, after being there for a time, we shut that down, got rid of all of the equipment and, and automobiles, and they sent me over to Chamblay. I became a base supply officer there at Chamblay, and uh, it was still <clears throat> under construction at the time I was in there. There was... Uh, one or two other base supply officers before my my time, but uh, after I got there, then things got pretty serious about opening up the base, and I stayed on until the base was opened, and uh, 21st Fighter Wing came in, and um, they they came in in 45, or I'm sorry, in 54. Then in June of, fi of 55. Uh, I was uh, ready to come back to States. Uh, I'd been over in France then for four years, and uh, I was reassigned to uh, Charleston Air Force Base. At, I'm trying to think of the name of oh, the <coughs> 444th Fighter Interceptor Squadron, which was also flying F 86Ds at the time. And uh, I was there. Squadron supply officer. Stayed there until 59. Was sent to uh, Saudi Arabia. Was there for a year. Came back, went to uh, uh, no, Amarillo for the school. And from Amarillo to school, the school with it was over. I went to uh, Wordsmith Air Force Base to uh, join up with the uh, fighter, or not the fighters, the uh, 50, B-52H. And uh, that base was the first basis to receive that new airplane. And uh, I became base supply officer there, the yeah, Strategic Air Command. I kind of think that being at Chamblay was uh, a big boost to my, my military career. And uh, I, I went from there and became base supply officer at uh, three other th three other air bases. Two two of them in the United States and one in uh, Thailand. There were uh, uh, there was a communist element of the French people at the time that gave us some troubles, but most of the French people were glad we were there and. Uh, they, they helped me quite a great deal uh, learning their language. I learned their language well enough that they could not, when I meet a new Frenchman, he would ask me, are you Berichon? Are you American? Uh, or are you Par Parisian? Because what I learned had all of those dialects associated with my, my speaking. So yeah. going, going to France was 
Excellent. That was good. It was a good education.